So listen, I've been kind of slacking this year with hand-wired boards. We're already about halfway through 2024. I've only done about three builds in total in terms of hand-wired ones. Been kind of getting sidetracked with PCBs, which is fine. People seem to enjoy the content. I enjoy it too. But what I want to do today is kind of get back to my roots, build another hand-wired board, and kind of achieve a promise that I kind of made like six months ago on the Scudder Katana build, which was a gasket mounted build. Now I lost interest in the Katana build. I'm probably going to do a stream doing that, but what we're going to build today is the Scudder 37, which is my first ever hand-wired gasket mounted board. So this here is the Scudder 37. It's called the Scudder 37 because I'm a genius with naming and this, if you count them all, has 37 keys in total. I was going to call this the Scudder bubble originally because it had like a weird bubble design on this like top plate here. It was more rounded completely. That didn't work out too well with printing, so I ended up switching away from that to just doing this like really big 15 millimeter wide bezel here, which I think looks kind of cool. I'm kind of really into big bezels right now, but this here is a 37. It is a gasket mount design. So you can see there's this like three part. And basically if we put this plate here and pop this on, you'll see that kind of rattles around because there's all the space in here for a gasket. What I will do later in this video, once we actually start to put the gasket on is I'm going to go into the software and kind of show you how that works because it's a really easy like mechanism to implement on pretty much any board you want. It basically just sandwiches it between two like big thick gaskets. And this is going to be a four millimeter gasket. So it's going to be dual four millimeter gaskets. So like a lot of padding there. But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to actually pop off this top bezel here. I'm going to take our plate here. I'm going to put off the bottom section here, which also has the very nice Scott O'Keefe's logo there. I like that. Um, and also these files are available for free if you want to build it yourself. So link in the description, you can just go and download those from GitHub. You can build it yourself if you want. But we're going to grab our plate here. We're going to put this down and then I'm going to grab these right here, which are just little pour on little foam switch things. They sit in between the switch and the plate. I've used it on my Scott along, which I'll link the video for that. The Scott along with the 10U space bar. I'll link that in the top right in the description. It's kind of a cool build. I don't know how much dampening these are actually going to do for the sound, but I figured since we're doing a gasket build here, we might as well put as much dampening as possible. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to pop it on the switch plate here. There are all the foams on the plate here. They're a little bit crooked because these are pretty tedious to put on and align properly. And I don't really know if they're gonna do anything because I won't have a way to compare, but I put them on anyway because this is a gasket build. But I'm gonna put this down now and then I'm gonna grab my switches here, which are just some MMD Matcha switches. They have a dual position spring, so it should have a little bit more travel or a little bit like a weird feel for a linear. I think they feel nice. They're also pre-lubed, so they're gonna be pretty good in there. And then I'm gonna also grab my stabilizer here, which is a custom 3U stabilizer. That is a 14 gauge piece of wire in there. Eventually I'm gonna do a video on how to make custom stabilizers because they really open a lot of opportunities. You can do like 3U like this. You do like on the Scott along where it has a 10U. You can do a 5U stabilizer. You really do anything you want with them. And this is also holy model, which I didn't record that process. Another video I want to eventually do. I'm going to put that in the board here. I'm going to put the final switch plate foam right there. I'm going to put the switches in and I'll be back after. So you can see that we have all the switches in the board here. I think it looks really nice with the green and the beige and the brown. It looks kind of cool, I think. But the one thing with these switch phones that I will say is that if I take this here and I just kind of push on a switch, you can see how easily that comes out. Now, I don't think this is a big deal if I grab this switch and put it back in here. I think once I start soldering this together, it will actually hold them together. It normally does anyway. But if you are building this, you might want to kind of hot glue these to hold them in better. But now what I'm going to do is put this down and you can see that this is column stagger. So that means each column is kind of offset. It's a 0.25 stagger. So kind of a little bit different than a normal staggered board. Typically the bottom row, if I flip this over on a normal board, the bottom row is staggered 0.5. So this, these ones are the same as a normal board, but this one would be over one more quarter unit. But what I'm going to do to solder this one up that I do differently than my other builds, so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to grab some 30 gauge copper wire and I'm basically just going to tie all the pins on the columns together. These will be easier to do it that way instead of using like a straightened wire that I kind of have to bend. I'm just going to go through, I'm going to use this 30 gauge, I'm going to tie these together and then we'll be back after to do the rows, which are just going to be the same as any other hand wire board. You just basically put the row across and solder the diodes to it. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to tie them together and I'll be back after. So there are all the columns. As you can see, they're really, really thin wires there. But one side effect of this being really thin wire is that it was actually really easy to solder because there's so little thermal mass, it pretty much heated up instantaneously, connected, and was good to go. Now you probably also saw me going through with a multimeter throughout this and just kind of testing. So if you listen right now, you can hear those beeps, meaning that there's continuity. I highly recommend getting a multimeter if you are gonna build hand wire boards. It just helps with kind of debugging where stuff is. But that's the columns all wired up. What I want to do now are, of course, the rows. And this is where I think it's going to solve a lot of the issue I had while wiring that, where if I just take this and push on one, you can see 
they kind of pop right out. Now, like I said, you could just hot glue those to fix that. What I'm going to do is use my typical method with some straightened copper wire to do the rows. And then I have a bunch of coiled diodes here, which I coiled before this video. There's probably B-roll playing on screen right now of me coiling these, but those are the coiled diodes there. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do all the rows with the diodes. And then we'll be back after to talk about the gasket, because that's where this build starts to get really unique from everything else I've done. And we'll go kind of in depth on how that works, but I'm going to go through, do all the rows now, and I'll be back after. So there's the entire matrix all wired up. As you can see, the row is nicely insulated from the column with all these little heat shrink tubing pieces right there. So that's really nice. And it also solved the issue where if I push on this, you can see that the switch doesn't pop out as easily. So it's giving a lot more rigidity there. But what I want to do next is I want to talk about the gasket and I want to take a look at it in software so you can get a better idea. But we also have to look at the case, the physical case that I printed to kind of explain how that works too. So I'm going to put this off to the side and I'm going to grab the top bezel part of the case first. And these are just going to be some heat set inserts here. So we can screw the bottom part here. So this is the bottom part that will kind of just connect like that and hold it together and then inside of there will be a gasket so there'll be a four millimeter gasket here and then a four millimeter gasket there that will kind of sandwich this in between them so if i put this on here and put that there you can kind of get the idea that there'll be a gasket that holds it in place so what i'm going to do is actually hop into shaper 3d so i can show you how the cad model looks for this so you can maybe get a better idea with the cross section because it's kind of a little bit hard to tell on here exactly what's going to happen and then we'll come back and we'll put the gaskets in and we'll kind of finish the build up. So I'm going to hop into Shaper 3D now. So here we are inside of Shaper 3D. This is, of course, the board in CAD. We have the plate here, the top bezel, and then, of course, the bottom of the board. But if I just go here to the front view of the actual model here, and then I enable my section view, we can actually get an idea of how this works. So we have our plate in the middle here. We have our bottom plate right here. So the bottom of the board, and then, of course, the top bezel part. And basically, if we just click on this here and the plate right here, we can see that we have a 3.7 millimeter gap. Now, the reason that's 3.7 instead of 4 millimeters, like how thick the gasket is, is that I want to actually have a little bit of squish between that so that it kind of can hold it in place instead of bouncing around too much and of course there is the same gap on the bottom part right here so that's basically how that gasket works is it just kind of sits in between there and bounces up and down if i go here and turn off my section view and then i actually hide the bottom of the board here so i just hide the bottom the other thing i want to point out is that there is a air gap between the plate and the actual case here so you can see here that there's this kind of little air gap here and if i actually select the wall here and the edge of the plate you can see that's 0.25 millimeters now the reason for that gap is that you don't want no gap there because of course we're 3d printing this we need some type of tolerances there and if there was no gap it'd probably bind together but if this gap here was too big the board could actually move around both left and right and then up and down and you don't want that you basically just want it riding on that gasket in that like chamber on the side so you want it to just ride in the gasket right here just up and down you don't want it to really move left and right up and down you just want it vertically basically just vertically up and down like that not this way and not that way on like a 2d plane so hopefully that makes sense on how this works what we're going to do now is jump back in and just continue the build so i'm just going to pop off this top bezel here i'm going to take our matrix plate and put that off to the side and basically what i have to do first is i have to get the heat set inserts in here because that's what's going to kind of compress the two parts together and then i also have to mount the gaskets to all the points on both halves so the bottom half will get six gaskets and then there'll be six up top so it will be a double gasket mount and i'm going to put that there i'm going to grab my gasket just to show you these are just some 90 millimeter long by four millimeter thick pour on gaskets you can find these on aliexpress there's only like one seller that actually sells them you can kind of see they have like a lot of squish to them which should be pretty good originally i was going to go with only a two millimeter gasket so a two millimeter double gasket so two on the bottom and two on the top but i don't think that would have gave enough bounce because i kind of tried it and didn't have as much as these so this should give a good bounce and have a pretty gasketed gasket mount so i'm going to take these and pop those on also i'll be back after i get all that ready and then we can kind of take a look at the first of the plate being in the board and kind of bouncing. So there's the bottom half with the gaskets on it. I'm going to put that down here. I'm going to grab my plate right here. And I'm going to just mount it onto the board. So you can see that kind of just sits like that. And they'll just kind of go into the screws there. Then we could take my top half here with the big chunky bezel right there. I, I'm loving big thick bezels right now. It's kind of my thing recently. But we can align this back portion with the port on the back there. That's just so a USB port can get through. But if we put that on top, what you can see now is that this does not move around if I pick it up. So you can see it doesn't like rattle all around, which is perfect. But then also if I kind of hold this like this and push on it, you can see that we have a little bit of bounce because of that double gasket there. So now if I put this down too and I try to type on it, you're probably not gonna really hear this, but maybe you can get an idea. But if we just type on this like fake type, 
you can kind of hear that it is like a gasket mounted board. So I'm getting really excited at this point. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop this top half off. I'm going to pop the plate off and then I'm going to grab my controller here. This is an RP2040 Pro Micro. I love this board. This is kind of my go-to board now is this little tiny one because it has like 29 GPIO, a lot of memory, 16 megabytes of flashes. It's a good board, but that will sit right in there and then I can wire everything to it. And one thing I have to be really careful about on this board compared to my other hand wire boards is I actually have to wire everything really clean on this or a lot thinner than usual because I don't want the wires interfering in between this. So I don't want a lot of wires in there that's gonna like push on the plate because that could mess with the gasket. I want that like bounce to it. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna wire everything up and then we're getting really close to typing on it, which I'm getting really excited because it should sound really good. And yeah, this is only about two hours in too, so it's a pretty quick build. So I'm gonna go through, wire everything up, and I'll be back after. So there's the fully assembled board. Everything is working. I already did test the firmware, and as you can see, everything's nicely routed underneath here, nice and neat, so that hopefully when I go to put everything into the case here, it won't actually interfere too much and it should still have the bounce of the gasket. So I'm gonna go through, assemble the board. I'm gonna put all six screws on the bottom to tie everything together and get that gasket actually working. So there it is, the Scotto 37 fully completed with the chunky bezel here, the brown, blue, and beige keycaps and overall theme. Scotto keeps logo underneath with the USB port for the RB2040 right there. I think it looks really good, and if I hold this here, you can see that it has flex to it because it is a gasket mount. So I'm really happy with this. I think it looks really good. What we're gonna do now, of course, is a thing probably most of you've been waiting for, and what I personally have been waiting for is, of course, a typing test because, well, it's a gasket mounted board. That's the big point with the gasket mount is that it sounds good. So we're gonna go type on it. We'll see how it sounds and we'll have a few more words on it and that's the build. So let's go type. So yeah, that's the entire build of the Scotto 37. I'm very happy with how it came out. I think it looks really good here with the blue, the beige, and the brown color scheme, the logo on the bottom, the like offset kind of like cutouts here for the bottom plate. Everything looks really nice on it. It is of course gasket mounted, so you can see that it has like that squish to it, which is really, really nice. Makes it sound really good and feels really good to type on. But yeah, other than that, I don't think I mentioned yet in this video, or I might've mentioned already, but the files for this are available for free in the description if you wanna build it yourself, along with all the firmware. There'll be a link to my Discord server, which you can get in contact with me on there if you want to, or just find help or talk about keyboards in general. And yeah, comment, rate, and subscribe if you like this video. It really helps boost me in the algorithm, and I will see you next time.